I'm just gonna go ahead and cut to the chase. I'm running for president in 2036. Are you ready to start the show? Awesome. Well, what an interesting week this week. President Biden and Vice President Harris released their tax returns. Biden's taxes revealed that he paid 26% on just over $600,000, which for those of you who like math, you'll know that that's the same amount that Trump paid times infinity plus 150000 <laughs> Jeff Bezos is building a $500 million super yacht. Yes, he's calling it, take that, Mackenzie. <laughs> that was... <laughs> That was his ex. That was his ex. It's the only yacht that has lifeboats that are also yachts. <laughs> and each lifeboat is actually captained by Lil Yachty. It's very ironic. <laughs> so we, of course, will be talking about Israel-Palestine later. But as you may know, in a call with Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Biden urged a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas while also approving a $735 million defense weapons contract, which is actually all the money taken from not defending our capital on January 6th. <laughs> the House approved a 9-11 style commission to look into the January 6th attack on the Capitol. And as expected, the 9-11 style commission determined we need to invade Afghanistan for another 20 years. <laughs> Matt Gates' confidant, Joel Greenberg, pleaded guilty to sex trafficking, among other charges. Matt Gates released a statement via Venmo emojis, peekaboo face, arrow, traffic light stop, this emoji. So. <laughs> Biden today visited the Ford factory in Michigan, where he drove their new electric truck, which is the first time he's driving since the Model T. <laughs> Ted Cruz is planning on going to Israel, which is not a city in Cancun. <laughs> Ted Cruz is going to Israel to assess their national security needs in what is being called the harshest response to the attacks the U.S. could come up with. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Today's guest is amazing. I've known her for many years. She's an amazing, amazing journalist and activist. Everybody welcome Francesca Fiorentini. Hello. What's going on? I'm sorry, that was me who said, ow, ow. I was trying to do an ow, but it came out more like, <laughs> ow. The microphone was all screwed. Now it's better. Do I sound better now? Yeah, no, let's start over. Let's do a whole sketch again. She's got okay. the monologue now. Can we do it again, please. No. Can we do a test test ow? Uh, ow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. All right, awesome. Do uh, I actually sound better? No, I sound the same, don't I? God damn no, it. no, you, you, sound, you sound crisper for sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. definitely, What's definitely. Up, I mean, we're yeah. gonna work this out. Look, by twenty thirty six. Yeah, this will be real smooth. Real good. Your, real good. As your campaign manager, um, we're gonna figure this out. Also, we're wearing <laughs> matching pink pink button ups. <laughs> yes. Uh, this was planned. Yeah, I was like, uh, "What don't I have to iron?" And that's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> because. Do you iron? Well, I have a lot of cotton shirts and my Marie Kondo is just like smushing all the cotton shirts in the same uh, <laughs> drawer and just like, yeah, get in there. And then having to iron, I, it's a steamer, you guys. Everyone, give it up for the steamer. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, what's going on, Sam? We're going to talk about sad stuff today. Fuck that. We're oh no 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 not not us. Anything that we talk about is always very positive. I hope um, it's all very irrelevant. Absolutely. No, we're going to stay off topic. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I really appreciate you being here. You know, I've watched. Uh, you know, I've been watching you do all sorts of great work over the years. Um, but I know you, you know, you take a, a, a big particular interest in Israel Palestine. So I do want to ask, like, how long have you been anti Semitic uh, uh, into <laughs> human rights? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a good a good 20 years. Um, I don't know. But look, I'm dating a Jew. So it's okay. Right, uh, right. Uh, I should be dating a Palestinian as well, to, like balance it out. <laughs> I feel like if I if I could successfully do a thruple with a Palestinian, first of all, 
hot as hell, number one. That is a hot right. ass <laughs> ruffle. Right. Um, not trying to objectify you, Sammy. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. No, it's totally fine. I mean, look at my shirt. But uh... <laughs> I'm staring at your boobs, but in the camera. <laughs> They're really far down here. They hang very low. Yeah. Um, is it is it more like this? What's up? Hey, yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> um. <laughs> but I I love that idea of of uh, of poly polyamory for peace. That is a great that is a great campaign. Well, it's so funny because like it I I make that joke, but it's like that's sort of the baseline joke for Israel Palestine is being like if only we could just like find love. Like if there was like a Romeo and a Juliet, and they could right. just like fall in love, and, and like then there would be right. peace. And it's like oh, I wish. It were as adorable and liberal as that. Yeah. Like I wish <laughs> your piece involved like no one changing and just like some good Hollywood story being written about like Israel Israelis and Palestinians falling in love right. with one another. By the way, that most likely happens all the time. Um, oh, for there's, sure. There's a lot of Capulet and Montague uh, like violence happening right now. But anywho, sadly, sadly. I don't think that's going to be the solution as much as I enjoyed welcome to the Zohan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I almost had that story multiple times. If I didn't have commitment issues, it was just more of a, does a hookup count? You know, is it, is it a one night Romeo kind of thing? Um, Romeo Abdullah, um, you know, how, however you want to phrase it. Um, but your, your, so your name is Francesca Fiorentini and that's Welsh, right? Yeah, absolutely. Through and through. That's awesome. So I understand that uh, you, so your mother is Chinese and your father is Italian. Uh-huh. Okay. So uh, here's a not racist question at all. What kind of noodle do you eat? <laughs> God, Sammy. Bottom of the barrel. We're doing some real warm-up material here. I, I did <laughs> I did say that, like, my, I guess my opening joke for a while was something like, you know, I'm Chinese and Italian, two of the cultures with the best food in the world and the biggest mafias. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, oh, we'll, we'll kill you, but we'll feed you first. And <laughs> it's true. It's true. That, that's like a thousand times better than my first bits, for sure. So, <laughs> bravo. If I, I saw you doing that when I started, I was like, I want to be more like her for sure. <laughs> I, there was a lot worse than that, but uh, yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> yes, I am. I am a little stateless as well. My parents are both immigrants, so I mean, I'm not stateless, but like, uh, yeah, I feel very international in that way. I did a 23 in me, uh, or a one of the, and um, yeah, yeah, one of the ones where they take your blood and then don't tell you what they do with it. They keep it, don't they? <laughs> you guys know oh, yeah. they've got like databases of us. It was for a job, actually. So anyway, um, not like I had to. They were like, "What's your blood?" <laughs> In order to get this job, we want to know how Chinese you really are. Um, I don't think you're Asian. Like it was one of those. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? Also, what percentage of Asian? Um, <laughs> no, and, and it was very annoying because I was like, what if there's like, you know, North African or what if there's like South, South, uh, South American? I lived in South America for a while. I was like very interested in, I don't know, I was like other regions, i.e. I think Africa and Asia I mean, and, and South America were the most interesting, the Americas. And it was like, no, it was just <laughs> this like epic, like family feud where like they each sort of feud. So it was like China, Italy. And then it was like... uh uh, English, Filipino, and they were going head to head. And then it was like, you know, uh, German, or not even German, like Aus Austrian, that's nearby, like Austrian, Japanese, <laughs> you. And so then it was like, they kept on like fighting each other. And I just had less and less of Asian and then European on either side. And it, it was pretty standard. <laughs> well, at least you have a couple clones coming on the way. You'll meet them in a few years. That's yeah. what they do with the blood. Yeah. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> they clone. Absolutely. Oh, dude, Ruben's in the f***ing room? Hell yeah. Dude, you know, Ruben is a legend. You know Ruben, obviously. Obviously. he's He takes in bubbler rips while putting a <laughs> cat <laughs> filter on his face. <laughs> the scariest shit ever. Which is? Which is? Is someone getting out of their car? I feel like I hear getting out of our car sounds. Who are we being heckled by? B? 
Bianca uh, is not heckling. Bianca's very, very, <laughs> very look. Is that friends behind you, Bianca? Yes. They're oh my god, that's on me. They're checking in on me. Wait, 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 wait. Is there a reunion happening? I mean, Israel Palestine, yeah, but like, are is there a reunion? <laughs> it's gonna be an unscripted show. Oh, like, like a hang, like, like a remember hang. that time? Mm. But yes, mm. it's definitely happening. I'm not sure when. But yeah. Very cool. Okay. Okay. We'll see I, I, uh, I, I'm actually writing a reboot of Friends, but it's like fitted to the demographics of the US currently. So <laughs> one of the Friends is going to be one third Asian and two thirds black. So they will be Blasian. And then we'll have uh, one uh, Latino friend. Uh, I guess like Raquel. We still have like the same names or Jose or something like that. Yeah, like that. And, Raquel's and then and then it's still four white friends. <laughs> But, no Asian. Uh, oh, oh, half no, Asian, half Blasian. Ha, yeah, qu- just a third Asian is all we can get right now. And then, uh, like, literally no Middle East. Like, the Middle Eastern will have to be, like, the Gunther, like, the coffee shop guy, so. <laughs> but it'll be so. great. It'll be, it'll be like that, uh, what was that, uh, United States of Al? Did you guys see that, <laughs> that, uh, that like new sitcom on CBS that's all about an Afghan translator who's like moving in with the white family and he's got his like marine dad or his marine friend like I'll help me out like well can I help you find a girlfriend <laughs> like it's just so so bad anyway um. It reminds me of like extras and Ricky Gervais and the whistle blow when the whistle blows. Like maybe it started off like a really hard hitting thing about like an Afghan translator coming to the States and then it just turned into like a horrible sitcom. Anyway, I'm getting <laughs> off topic. Sammy, what the f- are we doing here? What the f- is this, bro? This is, there's absolutely no plan. Um, we, yeah, we make up everything. This is an improv show, actually. Oh, hell yeah. Um, so it's like Biden's foreign policy. Absolutely, absolutely. Just like, I don't, I don't know <laughs> what the other guys did. <laughs> so you you've been a journalist now for well, at least a decade, right? Yeah. Do I you con- yes? Mm-hmm. Do you consider? Well, I mean, I think you've already answered this question through action. But do you consider yourself a fun journalist? <laughs> Sorry, I don't even know how to answer that. Are you, like, fun, though? Are you one of those, like, wee, wee, I'm going to cover that explosion, journalist? <laughs> Are you going to, like, tell us some good news? I feel like I'm going home to meet my, like, my, my boyfriend's Republican family or some shit. And, like, are you, like, fun? <laughs> wait a second. Uh, wait, is Matt's family Republican? No, they're not, but it feels okay. like something that, like... <laughs> <laughs> like you're like a sister-in-law like i'm right. trapped with you and you're like so tell yeah. me are you like a fun journalist <laughs> um that yeah it's really funny i think so i don't know i think it's important to always have some levity as i think you know your comedy also speaks to and uh you know always there are ways to talk about serious issues in way in in forms that aren't just so heavy and i think that oftentimes when we have like just endless bad news you kind of de- you are desensitized to it but if we like wrote an israel palestine explainer on the tummy of like a round boy seal just like you know like it's always sorry i'm really into seals on instagram right now but no it's, <laughs> it's always you know it's it's the it's the medicine it's the sugar to help the medicine go down type thing so um i think there is a role to be fun and that's always that's hard that's sort of why i will never be employed (laughs) i had a i had a special on msnbc last year and it ran in the dead of night on like it ran at like eight o'clock on december like 22nd it was like holidays everyone was off it was like it was like uh it was like the understudy of maddow who's like you know um you know like uh, yeah, it's like Ra- Raquel, Mad- like, sad out or something, you know, like, like hello. And uh, it was, you know, all like the understudies were filling in. It was fun. And But anyway, my show aired and my show was trying to be kind of fun and funny and a little different, kind of like United Shades of America, Kamau's show on CNN. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, but like, 
And it's hard because it's hard to convince news people that they need to like take themselves less seriously and we might like them a little bit more. But, um, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, that's that's such a great point. I never really thought about that. Like if 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 every journalist or news anchor just trained in being like a little bit funnier, maybe people would have better understanding of the world or be more inclined to watch the news or learn something. For sure. Also, if they didn't have the same mother like the same generals, the same former Republicans and right. like, you know, the same if they just didn't have the same talking heads all the time it would be a little more interesting so they could switch that up um, do you have a least favorite least favorite journalist least favorite anchor somebody you can't stand i'm deliberately forgetting his name but jake tapper today really i mean he's really <laughs> really crushing it when it comes to just unfettered like racism towards palestinians uh, right. and, and uh chuck todd i think chuck todd there's okay there's a few people i hate but like Jake Tapper, Chuck on CNN, Chuck Todd on MSNBC, and also close second is Nicole Wallace on MSNBC, former Republican, mm -hmm. worked for D uh, W. Bush, and is always like, yeah. is this the party? I mean, honestly, <laughs> they don't even believe in, in the election, and I can't even, like, you did this. You know, like, we invaded two countries in your administration all right like like yes trump is awful but he didn't invade two countries like you know i mean <laughs> let's be real now um so just so funny and just watching all these republicans like you guys want a job in news say you were a republican Ugh. oh they love it they want up on your <laughs> if you were a republican anywho who else? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Jake, Jake Tapper said some question, which is, is important yeah. to talk about, right? About Israel-Palestine today. You know, and he his framing, which is a lot of people's framing, is, is like, well, why did all this violence, you know, begin? You know, why? Well, I mean, Israeli. Israel had to respond to Hamas's rockets as if the rockets were the thing that kicked it all off. When, like, no, that's, what's, that's what started everything. See, in the beginning, Sammy, um, there was a Hamas rocket. That's what... In the, no. <laughs> it's in the Bible. It's actually in the Bible. The Bible says on day you one read there it. was a Hamas rocket. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Day two, there was God was like, "We got to clean this shit up." So I'm gonna create something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna create an Iron Dome on on day two. Right. There's an Iron Dome, and then gravity yeah. was created. Oh uh, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's no, but really, that's exactly what we're led to believe every time we talk right. about Israel Palestine, um, and right. also that it, it's like. You know, it is disingenuous to just call Hamas Hamas. It's like they're actually a democratically elected government of right. whatever the hell like it, it's of Gaza and and like because there's not a contiguous state of Palestine. So it's like there's a Palestinian authority in the West Bank and then there's Hamas in Gaza. So it's if you believe that there is actually a state, then call it the government rather than. But we all know that's a lie. We all know that, like, right. actually. Hamas does not have control over the territory, is not able to get goods in and out, basic medicine. That's why you always hear about the blockade of Gaza. Um, you know, we're here, heard, we're told about the bombing of tunnels and all of these terrorist tunnels. Well, those terrorist tunnels also transport like much needed medicine to what is the most populated region in the world. So it's like, yeah. you know, I don't know. You think your building is busy and then you, there are a lot of people? Gaza, it got you know, is like ten times that. It is, it is everyone crammed onto a small piece of territory, and like the average age is something like seventeen, young young people. So when they talk about Hamas using kids as human shields, the entire Gaza Strip is like young people. Right. Um, so yeah, so there's a so Tapper, Tapper is a f useless. I mean, really, <laughs> very useless. Tapper, you said Tapper and you said Chuck. Why is it like there? It seems like there's like a subtle, subtle, like sexual innuendo to all those names. You know, like mm. Chuck rhymes with f Tapper. <laughs> Tapper, that <laughs> right. Tap, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Tucker, you know, like he's tucking it in. Oh, Tucker definitely tucks it in, obviously. <laughs> he's he, a Tucker. He does yeah. the, like, Buffalo Bill, do you think I'm sexy? Like, you know, <laughs> just, like, tucks it between, and he's like, I think I'm sexy. Like, that is what Tucker does. He is a fucking serial killer. He collects human skin. Anywho, um, I, do once... you guys think I'll be employed after this show? <laughs> well, you guys think people will hire me? 
You're a Republican, right? Oh yeah, and and um, I can go blonde. <laughs> <laughs> you actually once said you described yourself as speaking jokes to power. Oh yeah. Uh, is that redundant or? In yeah, many ways. <laughs> speaking <laughs> jokes to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could just repeat it and yeah you man i mean we, yeah well we, I mean, Sorry, right yeah. we have to always use our comedy to like punch up a little bit i'm mean, nowadays it's all about punching down it's all about like exactly. sort of a grieved white man mad at the quote-unquote woke culture and be like oh you can't right. say broad anymore you know and like yeah right. you could but you'd sound like you're from the 50s you fucking weirdo like yeah, you can't do this anymore you can't touch a, a little quickity wookity like i don't know what they say but you know and you're like so like you go to comedy shows and it's always like you know Anyway, that's sort of been trendy nowadays because it's right. supposedly about cancel culture. But, you know, like the best comics have always, you know, uh, whether it's Carlin or Hicks or Pryor um, or even, you know, early Chappelle. Let us not speak of later Chappelle. Um, <laughs> you know, it's always been about punching up. And I think that's some of the most searing commentary. And it's like it's also, you know, I think you you understand what a privilege it is to do stand up. I mean. It really is that people come to your shows, they pay, that they like, you know, that they Wait, sit. they pay? <laughs> <laughs> this is a paid show, right? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, 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 like, we'll collect the, yeah. <laughs> what, what's the saddest thing you've ever been paid in at a comedy show, Sammy? Oh, uh, one time a guy, he, he, a booker, he pulled the money out of his pocket and there was lint in the, what he handed me. <laughs> So I didn't know if that was like part of the payment, but I, I kept it. That's nothing. I once got paid in a Monopoly money, like in a Monopoly coupon for Yo Play yogurt. <laughs> like it, someone put in the tip jar a straight up one, you know, one of those Monopoly coupons, I think. I think right. it was money. I don't know what it was, but it was for yogurt. And, um, and it I was did, more uh... money than I've ever been paid at a show. <laughs> I did a show in St. Louis once and they, yeah. we, we got to eat something off the menu at least. So that was cool. And I ordered a tamale and it was a hot pocket. <laughs> <laughs> With just like tapatio on top. And you're like, oh, it's a tamale. <laughs> that actually sounds I think it was, really good. It was like pepperoni and cheese too. It was a tamale. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm just, I'm so racist. I'm actually one eighth Italian, so I can, um, okay. <laughs> you have an amazing podcast called the, uh, called the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, you, uh -huh. the, yeah, tell us about, tell us about your, your podcast. Did you really not write it down? You, it's called the, uh, you can you can <clears throat> say this word. The situation <laughs> room. <laughs> it's called the situation um, room. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. You can say bish if you don't feel comfortable. Yeah. Okay. The the biash the biashuation room. Biashuation <laughs> room. You sound like you're eating something really hot. That's like the hot pocket. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah yeah every sunday 5 8 eastern um we did a whole episode on palestine yesterday um and had a wonderful human rights attorney named nora ericott who i've known for many many years and she was you know you just broke it down and and it, it is really you know it does feel like if you don't pay attention to the issue it kind of feels like oh there there it goes again um but this time it, it is cool because it is different in that so many more palestinians are being um put on mainstream television and we're finally yeah. hearing the story from their side and they're still not showing the footage. I mean, if you guys are online at all, you've seen like the amount of you know, emergency workers being bombed and targeted children, civilians, right. uh, journalists, and even Israelis who they, there was a protest, I believe yesterday, there was a member of the Israeli Knesset, which is their parliament, who was on the streets mm -hmm. and who was like, he's like speaking with like half a, like a sunglasses shattered. And he's just like, look at what they're, we're peacefully protesting and Israel's like, yeah. you know, completely um, clamp, 
uh, repressing this peaceful demonstration. And so it's interesting because like, I'm not, I'm not saying across the board, I haven't been glued to uh, mainstream news, but like, they're not going to show you the the most heartbreaking. They're going to show you sort of general right. rubble, you know, <laughs> like general rockets. And and I think, you know, one thing Nora was saying was like just how desensitized we all become to like, you know, another Middle Eastern sort of person, another Arab being pulled out of rubble, which is just so f***ed. It's so, 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 yeah. so f***ed. Um, but, but I would I, I would I would pull you out of rubble any day, Sammy. Oh, that's we're gonna definitely put some music you, in post for that. Yeah, yeah, only if you did the same for me. <laughs> of course, of course. If we're ever in that situation, I will pull you out of the rubble. Um, <laughs> you have my word. Out and, of the comedic um, yeah. rubble. Out of the comedic rubble. Um, even oh, though God. by booking you on a Zoom show, I literally put you in the rubble. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, Scott says he will tell math jokes during, which in that case, just just let me die. <laughs> just let me die. <laughs> just let me go. Because then not only do, well, the mostly it's because I get triggered because I'm not good at math. Even though I'm half Chinese, I really, <laughs> I really need to go back to Kumon. Did you guys ever get sent to Kumon? Anyone get sent yeah. to? Yeah. Yo, I oh, yeah. will, cr like, I want to go back to Kumon. There's a Kumon nearby. And like, do you guys know the face, like the logo of the Kumon? It's um, it's just this like circle face, and it's a right. one. It's like a circle face going like, <laughs> and like that's my face when I'm a when like confronted with math. I'm always like, <laughs> so I really I want to go back. I would f crush them eight year olds up in up in Kumon. I actually use them for my tagline for every math joke I tell when people don't get it. I'm like, come on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, I won't. I won't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great scene, though. You're like in the rubble and you're like, can you tell me one last joke? And I'm like, what did the triangle say? And you just die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, speaking of going from one dark topic to another dark topic, I know yes. you used to you used to work for AJ Plus mm -hmm. and uh, we do, I, you know, I do want to know, like, what you feel about the building that was recently accidentally um, bom bombed. Accidentally. Actually, it was a, accidentally bombed, fell over in a bomb accident. Um, it took a bomb. It took a, yeah, it took a bomb. It, it, yep. Yeah, it suffered a sudden, you know, like people have a stroke. It was like that. It yes. was like a, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm bombing. Yes. You know? It, it's like when Ruben takes a bong load, it, t it took a bomb load. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just all supernatural. It, we, the people went naturally. Natural it's very, causes. <laughs> it's funny. It's actually really interesting for like a corollary on this. I feel like the way people talked about COVID deaths, you know how it was like, well, he didn't die of COVID. He had a heart attack. It's like, yeah, right. mother because he was dying of COVID. Like, what right. are you talking about? <laughs> um, it's similar in the ways that like, when we don't want to talk about who killed who, it's like, oh yeah, those Palestinians just died. Anyway, you know, and like, they just, they died of, well, they died of, you know, inhalation of like smoke and stuff. Yeah, who lit the fire? You know, like, how did it happen? Um, what was the question? No, 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 I think you answered it. Um, it oh, was an accident. Oh, yes. The yeah. journalism. The, the yes. 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 I mean, this shit is crazy. I, I had a joke that got so misinterpreted, but I said it the other day on my podcast, which was like, I, you know, people are mad about which, of course, Twitter. M Twitter misinterpreting stuff. <laughs> Never. No, but it was like, you know, people are mad about journalism and or journalists being targeted by by Israel. And but yeah. to be fair, Hamas does use the truth as a human shield. So ah, there you go. I like how I like how you uh, you got like canceled from saying something on your own podcast. You canceled yourself. You're like that. That host was really just. Do. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, cancel her. Ugh. Bitch, face room. Never, ever heard of it. Delete, delete, delete. Our head, delete our head. I do ask my my guests because I do the live show and I'm always like, guys, in the future, like, tell me, do I get canceled? Like, do I make it out? You know, um, which is funny because we're talking about comics. I feel like that's that's where like white male comics think like they are in the rubble of like cancel culture. And to them, they're like dying, you know, right? Like they think right. they're the Palestinians in this situation. Okay, that was a stretch. But yeah, <laughs> white man of the new Palestinians. We'll take it. 
um, quote unquote. Um, <laughs> great. Well, uh, what is what is what do you consider now the biggest story in America that people that we should be focusing on? The media should be focusing on that's not. I mean, sure, if it's Israel, if it's Israel Palestine, then what would the next one be? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I don't know. I think, first of all, I don't give a shit about Liz Cheney. So I think I'm really tired of hearing <laughs> all about her. And like, will she, won't she? And once again, if you're a Republican, oh, they love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. That's a butthole. Mwah. Um, I, but I do think that it is important to talk about, like, uh, the, like, January 6th and everything that happened. The insurrectionists. Guys. The in we had a fucking mob storm the Capitol building. <laughs> like, what is going? And Republicans don't want to investigate it. So I think that is a story. It's being covered. I think it needs to be covered even mm. further, and it needs to be much mm. less like. So how is this a strategic move on the part of mm. Republicans? You know, because are they trying to retake the House in twenty twenty two? And I was like, who gives a fuck about the strategy? There is a clear right and wrong in this, and that's. And I think that's what's the problem with a lot of news and a lot of media generally. And generally around elections, we all do that to each other where we're like, well, okay, so putting my strategic hat on, um, and you're like, just vote your heart. You should vote your heart. You should think about issues the way it hits you in your gut, you know? Learn about them, but, but is this right or wrong? Israel-Palestine, is it right or wrong that there is an occupation, that there are people who are being displaced from their land? It is wrong. Is it, you know, is it, is apartheid right or wrong? It's f***ing wrong. And the same thing with, like, you know, January 6th. It's like, it's not a strategic move. It's just, we, and it, well, the best part about my reporting was a piece we did in Newsbroke about this, which was in Article 14 of the Constitution, it says that anyone who tries to insurrect, a re like, ignite, essentially, overturn the U.S. government, which, look, I'm all for that, you know what I'm saying? Nonviolently, of course, but like eventually, like I believe in the rev, you know, I'm, I'm down for the revolution. I plead the 14th, okay. Yeah, uh, but anyone who harbors, like essentially they had this whole harbor terrorist language, but it was like harboring insurrectionists. If you give aid or comfort to insurrectionists, you like you should not be sitting in government. That's essentially what right. Article 14 says. You should right. not be sitting in government. Um, and so many Republicans knew about what was going to happen. They helped. They <laughs> helped plan the Stop the Steal rally. This is Paul Gosar. This is um, Marjorie Taylor Greene. This is, I don't know, some other fuck's name that I don't remember because uh, I'm not a great journalist. But the point is, is that there are white supremacists in the Republican Party. They're all covering for themselves. Kevin McCarthy knows this. So I, I do think we should be foc focusing on like, I mean, and the media can only do so much. But for all of us, guys... You know, we got to we got to get these these nut jobs out. But I feel weird that we're only having a one way conversation. I'm like curious about everyone else's thoughts. But it is also good to. We've yeah, actually muted everybody because we don't we don't believe in democracy in this. Oh, I do, oh, I, this, for yeah. sure, for yeah. sure. Um, I don't know. But please in the chat, please in the chat, go ahead and let us know, and we'll delete it right away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, I mean that that that's interesting. I actually I, I never thought like I thought that that story was overcovered, but I realized that we actually aren't looking at it the way we should, and and, and that's very interesting to me. So I do want to ask you one more uh, question, and I'm I'm just basically writing this all down for my campaign. So you're you're, you're you know you're being exploited here, and I appreciate. Uh, you, you you being here for that. So are you going to get um, a little? I hope you get gray by twenty thirty six a little bit. You need. <laughs> you do look like still a child. You realize that? Right? Like, <laughs> like I know I, you have facial hair, but you also put, you could be you could be like I'm thirteen, and I'd be like, yep, that checks out like that. It's yeah, it's it's sharpie. It is sharpie. Uh, yeah. And I I will look like this in twenty thirty six, but I'll have dementia. So you'll, <laughs> it will read differently. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'll wear sunglasses. But and, that's part uh, of your disability. You'll reclaim dementia. <laughs> exactly. Unlike exactly. unlike Trump and Biden, how come they can't just lean into the dementia? You know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, they're trying to pretend like they don't have it. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I do want to ask you, <clears throat> um, you know, and I, you know, I know we've kind of gone back and forth on this, but like. 
if there were just a few key things um, either that America should know about Israel Palestine, like just if you if you had like 10 seconds in, in a not maybe 10, maybe like 25 seconds in an elevator, <laughs> but like in song um, and, and yeah, you could in rhyme so- it as well Please. and make it fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and but, don't make me sad at the end. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Please. No. Um, but 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 yeah, like a takeaway point or it, it, even better yet, an action step, an actionable step that, you know, because people always ask, what can we do? Yeah. You know, and, and I and people ask me that all the time. And I'm just like, uh, keep supporting live comedy. I don't I don't know what to say, <laughs> you know, so they also tell you to stop posting about Israel Palestine, don't they? They they do. They do. And I think that that means that they want more. So <laughs> they want it. Yeah. No means no, except when it comes to posting about Israel Palestine. That's my motto. <laughs> so wait, you wanted me to explain the situation and then talk about what you not, not you not explain. I mean, just just like if there were a couple if there were a couple bullets that like this is something Action that items. you don't know that you should know. And then here's what you can do. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing to know is about BDS, which uh, is not, you know, bondage and sadomasochism. It is boycott, <laughs> divestment, and sanctions. So, you know, sadly, I mean, it, one can lead to another, and I'm very excited for the campaigns that do this together. But, guys, BDS yeah. is like boycott, divestment, sanctions. So it's boycotting Israeli goods. It's divesting any kind of holdings from Israel and sanctioning Israel for their war crimes, essentially. So if you do believe that what is going on, or if you are – if you – accept reality then you know that war crimes are going on and this is actually a call that came from the palestinians themselves so palestinian civil society was like look we believe in nonviolent re- resistance nonviolence boycott divestment mm-hmm. sanctions was used in south africa to to end the apartheid regime there yeah. um and you know mandela spoke about palestinians and their liberation as well so here we are however many years later and we it's everything gets worse and that's the other thing to remember is it actually does get worse in the region but places like the the presbyterian church has divested from israel um there are other plate like other entities that it can divest it could even be like not buying sabra hummus you know and these kinds of things but i think we have to think which is about, disgusting by the way it is gross it is also yeah. like make your own hummus you can make better hummus than that um yeah but there are so like institutions if you're a part of and also like we need to put pressure and call our electeds you know have them on speed dial and be like yo 3.8 billion dollars to israel every year i think they got this by now like i think they've got a fine enough military they've been defending themselves so supposedly pretty well things are going in their direction maybe we can stop funneling all of our money to them speaking of dementia die fi man diane feinstein is our senator here in California. (laughs) My God. My God. Like, I'm sure she's like, you know, she thinks like Israel, Palestine, I don't know, or or like her grandsons or some shit. Like she does not know what the, like who's who. Um, Fun story, actually. I I went to DiFi's office. I was covering, there's a military school that trains, um, uh, trains the armies and different armies and uh, like personnel out of Latin America and it's called the School of the Americas. It changed its name but it basically teaches all kinds of horrible techniques, interrogation, even torture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I was going with uh, some um, activists to bring a letter to Diane Feinstein to um, talk to her about the School of the Americas and I was like covering it and filming it. And I'm waiting outside as they're waiting to get in and there are these two bodyguards who are like out there and I'm like, who the are these guys and they were looking at us and i was looking at them i was like what are you guys and then after like half an hour a like disgusting pale like like job of the hut meets um chucky the you know whatever come like comes wheeling out on a rascal just like (laughs) you know it's sheldon adelson who is a oh. rabid pro-Israel, rabid Zionist, yeah. rabid racist. He is great. He funds so many different um, uh, Democrats and Republicans, huge campaign co- contributor, also did die fairly recently. So um, right. funded Trump's 2016 campaign. He's like wheeled out. And I didn't know who it was. And my producer was like, that's f-ing Sheldon Adelson. And so I meant to go... <laughs> And, you know, like, get in his face, which I think would have been really fun for me to, like, wrestle this, like, rascal 
dude and I don't know, just like stop him. Um, or just like hold him by the by the forehead and so he can't like, you know, he could walk, he could walk. I'm not being, I'm not being f***ed up towards, towards folks who actually do need a rascal. He's just old, lazy and rich. Um, anywho, Dianne Feinstein is also bought off by the Israeli lobby as well. Right. And so right. that's the other thing. Anyway. Boycott, divestment, sanctions, really important. Calling your representatives and then following and spreading a lot of, I mean, I know it's hard for us to watch these videos, but to be fair, they're not being covered anywhere else. They're not being shown in a lot of mainstream outlets. So it is, it is, it does, it is effective, I think, to, to get out the truth, to share stuff on, online, um, even if it is hard to watch and you're like, I don't want to. And you're like, yeah, yeah, but you gotta. So I think even that can be sometimes helpful. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I mean, and, and just like one more thing to add to, to BDS, because there is obviously a movement to to counter BDS and basically shut it down as something that's just like evil and, uh, you know, anti-Semitic even. So I, 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 what I read is we need to legitimize BDS and make it make people understand that it's actually a good thing and it actually fights injustice. It's It's been successful in South Africa and I don't know anything else to add to just convince people that BDS is not an evil that. Well, that that's the other thing is, to, yeah, if you do have a Democratic lawmaker in your state or wherever you are, like they they have been pressured to say that BDS, you know, is is bad. And actually, in many, many right. states, I think it's something like over 30 states, there all are laws where a contractor <laughs> cannot get a state contract if they if someone in that business has said anything about Israel, anything sure. critical about Israel. Sure, so yeah. so you guys, we are constantly told about cancel culture and woke people and how you can't say this anymore, you can't say that anymore. Oh my god. The one thing you can never talk about is Israel. The one thing you can right. never criticize be, for fear you'll be anti Semitic or called anti Semitic, you know, and that is a that is by design. So there is a lobby, there's an Israeli yeah. lobby that has money. There is is also advocates um out that are part of an Israeli lobby that do things like bully professors if professors wanna talk about the occupation or, or professors wanna talk about Palestinian right. human rights, they they get put on a list of like, all right, well this professor is, you know, anti Semitic, enemy of, you know, Israel Da, 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 they'll get hounded that people will go to their classrooms and sort of step to them go to their teach-ins if they ever do any kind of events i've seen this happen so anyway that's an aside but um so for sure it's pressuring democrats to understand that bds is not anti-semitic it is not violent and it actually does come from a call from palestinian civil society that like people mm -hmm. on the ground are like this is a tactic. Let's do this. Now, to be fair, there's also stopping aid to Israel, which is another, it's part of that, but it's right. like, I think we've all realized we've thrown in the towel on this government sometimes. Um, right. Anyway. That is, yeah, that is the next step. But I mean, that, that's a great point that, that, that talking about Israel is the ultimate cancel culture. In fact, I was at a comedy club and I heard a comedian complain, like, you can't talk about Israel anymore. You can't think of it, 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 um, actually, I was, uh, I was can't actually talk about right. Oslo anymore. Nobody can. <laughs> right, right. First, it's you can't touch women, then you can't talk about the Oslo Accords. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something. Yeah, I actually, I was actually threatened, uh, by BDS before I did it. Well, I did a Palestinian gig and somebody had read in a blog that I had an, I had an Israeli intern at one point. And they were like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what? Like, they, they didn't want to book me anymore. They're like, BDS, BDS. And I was like, no, it was a non paid intern. So technically it was BDS. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, I mean, that, that's so amazing. I, 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 um, I really admire all of the work you've done. And I, I really value your, you know, your Thanks. perspective on this issue. So I, I appreciate you being here. Um, anything you. else that you, you can uh, share with us or, or the world? Or do you want to say? Um, I think that we the pressure I would say the the um, the pressure is on I think the tide is changing I also would encourage people if you get if you were like sort of weirded out by things I said or you don't know um, yeah rest assured uh, I'm right always and um, no uh, <laughs> no but for sure to read for yourself for sure to read a good good primers there's like 
you know, even Vox, even places like Vox on YouTube mm-hmm. have like good explainers, but I would say Jews, yeah. um, there are many Jewish organizations, especially American organizations that are leading the way on a lot of this stuff, um, who who are basically there to be like, it's not anti-Semitic, it's cool, uh, <laughs> as if we needed <laughs> we needed that on this issue. But um, uh, Jews, Jews for, econ- uh, da, da, da. would you, Jay Fred? No, Jew- Jewish Voices for Peace, JFP. J- JVP. JVP, sorry, why am I yeah. JVP? Um, JVP has got a great primer on on YouTube as well. So just like read stuff, read the primers. This is a land issue. It's not a cultural or a religious issue. Um, and yeah, uh, don't hesitate. Don't feel like you have to be perfect or know everything before you can come out and stand against atrocities. That's amazing. And uh- and. F- Bibi Netanyahu, f- that guy, <laughs> forever. <laughs> it, I th- th- thank you so much. I mean, that what a great closer too. Is that, that do you drop? Do you drop the mic? Can you can you drop your mic after that? I don't even know um, if my mic's working, but um, B. No, it is. It is. Yeah. Dude, you guys, you guys know. Have you heard BB talk, Sammy? You know BB's voice is like. <clears throat> it's a very low. <clears throat> it is a little Buffalo Bill. He sounds. <laughs> he sounds like he just. And I don't mean this in a like. I'm serious. Like, I'm not trying to say this just because he's you know a horrible authoritarian right winger <laughs> in the head of of Israel. But he sounds like he just got done eating baby bones. Like he's just like <laughs> anyway. Was the right like the devil like he's dim- <laughs> the voice is demonic look uh, it up if you know what i mean like it's like so creepy anyway, but yeah f- that guy uh that's amazing um <laughs> as you know i am uh running a very successful strong campaign thus far yeah and um i'm practicing my my speech on my stance on israel and i'm obviously taking notes from every prominent politician so if i can just kind of like run by you like my thoughts so far okay Please. so so I 1,000 gazillion, trazillion, Brazilian stand by Israel <laughs> and support its right to offend itself, sorry, to defend itself against innocent children. I believe that Palestinians have the right to exist in small confined spaces. Hamas, uh, I ate it for lunch today. I will suck the dick beneath the pussy of every lobby member who offers me a check. Uh, and I promise to defund the police and send all the extra money to Israel so they can buy weapons for their other weapons to have weapon friends because no weapon deserves to be alone during the holidays. Your pal, the Palestinian, Sammy Obeyed. How was that? Thank you so much. That was great. I really love, I think my favorite part of that was the, I will suck your or go down on you like because like, it's gonna you know we we joke you guys we all joke but 2036 i feel like like there's gonna be some kind of andrew yang like figures not no disrespect you <laughs> love that guy but there's right. gonna be like i'm gonna disrupt the i'm gonna just disrupt the israeli lobby i'm sucking your d- like just <laughs> <laughs> i'll suck your d- in the lobby yeah. uh Hilarious. Cut um, out the middle, man. Let's just do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, BDS. Yeah, there's a BDSM callback in there for mm-hmm. sure. Um, amazing, friend. Uh, this was so amazing. I really, really appreciate you being here. I um, appreciate you. Yeah. Again, thank you. I hope we can do more stuff together. Obviously, uh, Zoom shows are falling apart rapidly, but we are doing our best to uh, keep things going and we'll keep uh, podcasting and stuff like that. And, Here's the thing, uh, Sammy, yeah. it's good though, because they're all out there spreading the variant and that's what <laughs> we need for the long game of getting them all back in here. You see how they work? <laughs> right, right? Yes. They're gonna be back in here and give it six months. They will, no, they will, No mask policy yeah. in grocery stores? Okay, we'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, uh, you know, got to give the shout out to the people who come to our shows religiously, obviously, all of our friends, Bianca, Kara, Aaron, Ruben, the whole crew, Dirk, thank you so much for being here and supporting uh, supporting us. So keep supporting live comedy. Love y'all. Thank you, Sammy, for doing this. And you should come on my podcast, too. I would love to. I would love to. Uh, yeah, let me know anytime. Sounds good. All right, Francesca Fiorentini, everybody, give it up. Thank you so much for attending tonight. Y'all rock. We love you so much. And uh, keep coming back for more. And now we have a word from our sponsors. Everybody, listen up. Are you tired of being spied on by your digital personal assistants? Hey, Siri, what's on my schedule? 
I don't know, probably just absentmindedly scrolling through TikTok eating pizza rolls followed by a deep dive on YouTube and a dry jerk to Patricia Richardson. Hmm. Or having your political opinions shaped by a freaking computer? Alexa, who played the mom on home improvement? Here's what I found on the web for Obama drone movement. <laughs> Introducing Karen, the new assistant who's not interested in your bullshit because she's only out for herself. Okay, Karen, what's the capital of Algeria? Excuse me? Algebra. I don't know. Letters belong in text messages and soup. I already solved for X by dumping his ass. It's like if you took a Trump Twitter bot and put it in a speaker. Okay, Karen, uh, play my cumbia mix. Oh, hell no. That music is way, 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 way too Mexican. Let me speak to your manager. Wait. <laughs> Wait. What? This is my home. It's not racist, but its operating system is. Okay, Karen. Call in, please. What? Oh, you live here? Let me see your driver's license. What's your <laughs> mother's maiden name? Social security number? Karen, it's no more intrusive than those other listening devices you're already using. So what the hell, right? What do you have to lose? If you're not satisfied, Karen will return herself. Thank you for calling the Karen Returns line. Representative. I think you said more Karens. If this is correct, press one. <laughs> God damn it. Representative, let me speak to your manager, Robot. <laughs> Who are you calling, Robot? Robot? Karen, why let a couple of tech giants take over your lives when Karen already does? <laughs> okay, Uriah, should I order some more anal beads and gag balls? <laughs> <laughs> Those are stress balls. How many times do I have to tell you? It is an, as unnecessary as it is a thing. Buy yours today at your favorite social media platform. Back to you, Sammy. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay, Karen. All right. You're watching Scared Straight. Straight news for straight news. I'm your host, Turner Cuckelson. And on tonight's show, is the sky blue or is that just what liberals want you to think? Well, you know what that means. It's time to talk to this week's conservative rock star, my old friend and Florida Congressman, Nate Fence. Nate, how you doing? Hey, Turner. Thank you so much for having me on your show. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a very real congressman from Florida, but don't Google that. I'm also one of Turner's oldest friends. <laughs> we are pretty much tied to the hip like political hot rods in a think pond. Ha ha ha! Ah, ah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and anyone in the lobby of a Holiday Inn, it appears we have breaking news. It seems that very real Florida Congressman Nate Fence has been accused of using taxpayer money to board alligators on his yacht to Miami. What? Preposterous. Nate, would you like to make a statement? Did you send it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, bye. I categorically deny these allegations. This is an erroneous personal attack on me and my 30 years of very real public service to the people of Florida. Let the record show that I've never even seen an alligator before. And as a longtime friend of yours, frankly, as someone with the same values. Well, according to our field reporters, you also paid an alligator wrangler to dress up 10 female alligators in bikinis and bring them on your yacht in Miami last March. Would you like to comment on that? Of course not. It's not true. I once again categorically deny this accusation. This photo is clearly a distorted image of me hosting a senior citizen's booze cruise for the local retirement community. My yacht looks very different. Of course, as a close personal friend of mine, you spent a lot of time on my yacht, so you of all people should know what it looks like. Remember last spring break? Uh, no, I don't remember that. Uh, you must be thinking about someone else. Uh you remember, we had that crazy party. You said, where are all those hot gator ladies at? I was like, what are you talking about? And also, what are gators? 
You held me against my will and then made me pose for this photo? Um, my producers are telling me I've never been to a place called Miami. Oh, look, I just found another one. Okay, uh, that's definitely not me. Uh, you must be thinking of my evil twin brother, Tucker Carlson. Uh, but thank you for being here, Nate. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, we got a lot of factual news um, for straight dudes. And that's exactly what we go for around here. Before I go, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to clear my name. You've always been a stand-up guy, and to prove that to your viewers, I'd like to play this voicemail. Uh, no, no. Uh, we, we really have to go, Nate. I, I, I wish you the, the very best of luck. Uh, What's and up? That party the other night was sick. I cannot believe how many kegs we bought. Or should I say the taxpayers bought, am I right? And those alligators are babes. Mine blown, my dude. You are a legend, brosif. I want to be like you when I grow up. But until... That was weird. We must have lost him. Anyway, uh, we'll be right back after this message from our sponsor, Pistols for Preschoolers. Uh...